Hi, this is Josh Haftel again with another video on the all-new Lightroom CC. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the culling tools that are built into Lightroom CC. They're going to help you tell a more refined story with your photos. Now, culling is one of the most important steps that you could do inside of any kind of image processing workflow because it's going to help you narrow down the photos to only the best photos in that selection. If you think about it, the only difference between a good photographer and a bad photographer often is that the good photographers only show you their good photos. So one of the things that we can do to improve our photography game is actually cull out and remove out those photos that don't actually tell a very compelling visual story. Lightroom CC is full of lots of tools that can help you with that. To start off with this, I'm going to take the first photo inside of this group of photos that I pulled in from my trip to Cuba. And I'm going to go into the full screen mode or the details mode. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. Go down to the bottom bar and you can click on the icon down there. Or what I like to do is I just like to use the space key. So just press the space bar and you'll go right into it. Now a couple other things you might want to do is I like to get rid of distractions. So for example, I can close out of this uh, sidebar over here and now I'm just looking only at my photo. And what I can do now is I can start using the different tools to be able to select the images that I think are going to be most useful later on to tell the story or to share with my friends and family. Um, one of the reasons why I do this first is because I want to do this before I spend a lot of time editing photos and so I put myself into a specific mindset to pick the photos that are going to be worthy of editing and worthy of sharing later on. So how I do this is I use some of the different tools that are available inside of Lightroom CC and if you see along the bottom I've got the uh, flag tool and the reject tool and I also have our star rating and these two different sets of tools help me go through the process of picking the best photos. And I usually use a two-step process. The first step is to go through and either flag or reject photos. And the second step is to go in there and then pick some of the star ratings to help me narrow it down even further. So let's start off with the flag and reject. And the flag and reject is something that I use to be able to either pick a photo that's really, really great, so I'll flag it, or the reject one is something that I would use to reject a photo that's just really terrible. Usually the things that make something terrible is that it's too dark, it's too bright, you know, you can't see any details, it's out of focus, the composition is just terrible, and then of course something that's great, something that's a hero shot, something that you just know everybody's going to love, that's when I'm going to use the uh, pick button. So this photo right here it doesn't fall into either one of those categories. Now, of course, when I was shooting the photos, I was thinking a lot about why am I shooting this photo or another photo, um, but I, I remember like I got there and I just landed in Havana and I remember being like just in love with the different kinds of textures and architecture. And so of course, shot a lot of photos and that doesn't mean that all the photos are worth sharing later on, um, but there are some photos in here that I won't reject them, but I'll just skip over them. So we're gonna skip through a bunch of these. Now, here's a photo that um, maybe it's interesting. I don't know. Uh, I can look at it the first time and I can say, well, you know what, of course it's not going to be uh, the next award-winning photo, but it also does tell a, a part of the story that I think might be interesting. And so one of the ways that I think about creating images or creating a story of images is to look at if this image would work maybe as part of a cohesive story that if I, I tell it through either a photo book or a series of photos that I share online, I, I might include that. So in this case, I'm going to pick it as a pick, and you can either do that with your mouse and you just click over here, or you can use the keys on the bottom. So the, the Z key, which is right next to your shift key, of course, is going to pick that photo. The X key is going to reject that photo. But again, I'm going to use the Z key. Now, that's a great way of being able to just quickly select some photos. And so the, the cool thing here, the, the super trick or the hot tip is if you rest your hand on your keyboard, your hand just naturally sits really nicely right above the Z and the X keys, and your right hand falls really nicely on the uh, arrows over and right. So we can quickly and easily just go to the next with our over key, and we're looking for another photo that might be interesting. Let's see here, we're gonna see a lot of different kinds of photos. Now this one is kind of interesting. We're gonna hit the, the Z key again, and it's gonna help me pick this photo. And here's a photo that I can see is, it just missed the mark. Now I, I know what I was shooting for, but the crop is really terrible. I cut off everybody's legs. This is the, the common thing. I remember my mother always complaining about my father doing when he's taking pictures, uh, and I did it, so maybe it's genetic. So in this case, I'm just gonna use that reject button because I'll never use this photo. So I'm gonna hit reject, and we can go over and to the right, and 
There we go. So that's actually what I was going for, where I've got all the legs in the photo and I crouched down a little bit just to give that, that other perspective. And we can select the Z key again to pick it and we can keep on going through. Now again, here's another photo that's blurry. Now it looks like I either didn't focus it or I moved the camera and it was on a long exposure. No matter what the reason was, this is blurry. I'll never be able to use this photo. I'm just gonna reject it. And we'll talk about in a later video what we can use these picks and rejects to do. I've finished going through and flagging all the photos that I wanted to flag. And to take a look at that, let's just go down to the square view and we can see now that a number of these different photos, we can see little uh, icons over here that they've got the flags. So we can see what I've done. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go through that second phase of culling and I'm gonna use the filter tool to be able to do that. So I'm gonna click on this filter guy over here and I'm gonna say, show me only the pictures that I've flagged. Now, what I've done here is I've shown only the pictures that I flagged. So this gives me a chance to ignore any of the pictures that I didn't look at before. So I can go through and do another round of culling where I'm gonna use the star ratings as my next way of doing this. So I'm gonna go again, press the space bar to go into the full view version. And I can start going through to apply star ratings to these images. Now, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. And um, basically, there's a couple different end uses that you're gonna have for the image. You're either going to go through and, and use these images as single one-offs, you're gonna share it to Instagram, you're going to make prints for friends and family, or you're gonna put them together in a book or a series, and somehow they're going to tell a cohesive story. So thinking about it from that perspective, uh, usually what I'll do at this point is, if I saw something about it that I liked that caused me to flag it, I'll leave it flagged for the most part, but then I can use the stars as a way of overriding some previous thoughts. And, and you'll see that as you go through your images more and more, you'll start to get a better feel for how to use these different tools. So go back to this first image, and I like to use the keyboard shortcuts at the top. We got one through five to set the different kinds of star ratings. Uh, this image is basically a three to me. It's nothing amazing, but it also has potential later on down the line. And of course, as you go through and you start editing the photos, you'll find that the editing process can also take a photo and either fix problems that are inside of it so it becomes more than a three uh, or more than whatever you started off with or push it down because you realize, well, there's really nothing in that image. So again, we'll say like, oh, that's a, a three photo. This one I like a lot. Uh, and usually what I'll do is I'll only start, I'll go up to four. Four is the highest I'll go until I edit them. And only after I edit them and I retouch and I refine it and like make sure that there's actually that potential inside of the photo that I thought that there was that's when I'll do a five. So anyway, we'll keep on going through here. Uh, I like that photo a lot. I like this photo a lot. I like this photo a lot. This one as well. So I'm just going four stars. This one is okay, uh, kind of mediocre. Um, sometimes I just like, if I don't know, like this photo right here, I thought it was cool. Like the idea of using the sunburst coming out of the cannon and there was an oil refinery that made some smoke and it almost made it look like there was a, a fuse on fire, but the composition is just not that amazing. So I'm actually going to call that a two star. And you'll see as time goes on, as we add more and more of these star ratings into the image, that it'll help you organize uh, and be able to find photos in one way or the other and make it really easy to narrow things down. So we'll just keep on going through here and uh, we're picking different kinds of ratings for the different images. Anyway, and as I go through, you'll see how we can select all these different uh, ratings and star ratings for the images. And it's going to really be uh, to taste to some degrees um, because it's really going to be your photos and what story you want to tell. So those are a bunch of the different ways that we use uh, to start culling the images. And of course, now that I've gone in there, I can say, you know, show me only the four star photos. Uh, and that's what we see up here in the filter. You can see that it says greater than or equal to, and then the four star. So now I can look at it and I can see, ah, that looks pretty good. I, I've got a, a nice start to narrowing down the photos. I started off with 150 and I've got about nine photos showing up here. So I, I've definitely narrowed it down quite quickly uh, to a set of photos that is much more in line with the visual aesthetic that I wanna share. Um, but we'll go deeper into some of the other tools in the next video.